Thank you. Now, I want you to stand up. Say, good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. This is your beloved. Say your name, Marilyn. Amen. Amen. We are his beloved. You can be seated. Do you know, and maybe I told you last time, that over 42 times in the New Testament, you're called his beloved. So look at someone. Say, did you know that you're his beloved? Amen. We're his beloved. That is so beautiful to me about how much he loves us. This morning, I want you to open your Bibles or your phones to Joshua 1.8. You know, many people say to me, what is it with you? Here you are, 84, and you are going all around the world. <laughs> and this year, I will be, I believe, in 16 countries before January. So... You know, you say, well, where do you get your energy? How do you do that? I'm going to tell you, I get it from his word. Amen. His word is life. Amen. Amen? And so I want to just share the secret of success. So put your hand on your heart. Say, I cannot forget the secret of success in every area of my life. Amen. Now, when I became 80, I got the most invitations and have the biggest meetings. So people say to me, what's your secret? So I'm going to tell you the secret. Joshua 1, 8. And what I'd like for you to do, I'll count to three. I'd like for you to read it out loud because it's your secret to success. And it will make you successful in every area of your life, in your health, in your family, in your wealth, in wisdom, every arena of your life, every season of your life, it will make you successful. And I found this key when I was 42 years old. I'm 84, and it works. And it'll work for you because it's God's word. So I'll count to three, and then we will read it. One, two, three. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So let's look at this. This is, you're going to be prosperous, you're going to be successful in everything. If you speak the word, if you meditate on the word, and if you do the word. Three keys. So stand up again. You say, this is an exercise class. Every time you come, you make us exercise. Put your hand on your heart. Say the key to success in every area of my life is to speak the word. Meditate on the word and do the word. Amen. Amen. And so this is the key. You can be seated. Now, when God said this to Joshua, what could he meditate on? You know, you think, well, probably he meditated on Proverbs. No, he didn't because Proverbs wasn't written. Well, maybe he meditated on Ephesians. No, he didn't. It wasn't written. The only books that were written were the Pentateuch. Put up your hands. Say five books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. How would you like to meditate on Leviticus? You know, that's what he had. So did he do it? And you will see he is successful. When you read this whole book, you will see he's successful in every area. Now, when I was 42, God began to speak this special scripture to me for my life. This is the theme of my life. So, you know, if you say, well, it doesn't work, 
too late to tell me. I've been working it ever since I was 42 years old. So what I began to do, and of course I learned to speak the word, speak the promises, because, you know, don't speak problems, speak promises that go with problems, because the word doesn't return void, right? And so we speak problem, problem, problem. No, speak promise, promise, promise. And so I learned how to speak promises, speaking them every day, but meditate. How do you meditate? And so I began to look at the word meditate. Now, the basic thing I found is that when you meditate, you memorize it. So you speak it and speak it and speak it. So I said to the Lord at 42, what do you want me to meditate on? And he said, Proverbs. Oh, well, that's a good book. That's certainly better than Leviticus. And so I began to memorize the book of Proverbs. So every day I would speak the words. And in nine months, I had memorized every chapter in Proverbs. And so those words were inside me. Now, I found this about God. He is looking for truth. And your Bible is truth. So hold your Bible up or your phone. Say, this is truth. Okay. So where is he looking for it? In my purse, on the table, under the bed? No. He said, thou, God, desires truth in the inward man. So God is looking for truth in here. So point to your heart. Say, God is looking for truth in here.